I believe that to non-artists and even to artists that collaboration and the magic of it can feel like a mystery, um, right? So that it's, it's technical, but then it's not technical. Like there's a fluid and embodied process for collaboration for many, many artists. And um, you are, and your voice is the way that we as listeners experience this, this album. Your voice is the invitation into all of these emotional spaces and spiritual spaces um, through your in interpretation of these songs that Rami wrote and you do it so beautifully um, and with such care. I can't even imagine another artist um, doing you know, these songs and I feel like it's such Thank you. Thank a you. credit to you and a sign of, 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 of um, the depth in which you engage the practice and the process of collaboration. So I would just love for you to share with us a bit about the process of being an artist who is a collaborator and a receiver that merges someone else's words with your distinctive creative expression. I have heard and I love to hear you talk about yourself being a vessel in this process of wrapping yourself in a song um, and, and, and listening for what's there, for what needs to be there. So just reflecting on Jerusalem, can you share some of what you experienced receiving and then working on the song as a collaborator and as a vessel? Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you for um, noting everything that you said. Yeah, the collaboration process is really uh, a very, very spiritual process for me. It's um, very much a part of my spiritual practice to um, listen. And throughout this process, you know, Rami would send me a song um, and he would uh, it was his vocals and his uh, lyrics and he would be playing the melody on the guitar and so this is the first time I've I've really worked in this capacity and so I did I wasn't afraid of the process um just when I'm doing music I either feel it or I don't so I don't I don't I don't like to have to search for um, a way to connect it, it either instantly happens or it's just not going to happen at all and so with this song Jerusalem um, when Rami sang it to me and, and I read the lyrics I was like wow so for me it was important to to hum and to um, really just connect with the sound that I'm that I was raised on which is like in the in the black church I was raised by my black grandmother and every single morning when I was a child, my grandmother would be on her knees. She has this little orange chair in the front room and she would, I could, I would wake up and see my grandmother on her knees, her face in the Bible. And sometimes she's just moaning and humming and, and having this conversation with her God without words that I understood. But those hums really, um, it didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like I was intruding by hearing the hums, the her moans and her groans really sounded like she was talking to God on my behalf, too. And in a way, she was uh, inviting me into the conversation. So to start the album like that and to start that song like that with those hums, you know, it really it really was a part of my spiritual practice. It's a spark. It's, it's, it's how I connect to God. It's how I. Um, hear from God. It's it's how I create a setting and create a space to to cultivate something that I think could blossom into something really beautiful that people can actually indulge in. Okay, that was so beautiful um, and so many things, <laughs> so many things. But one, I mean, that you gave us the sacred reminder of like the craft of listening and the craft of deep listening. You know that as the first step to collaboration, like that there there wasn't another step to take without that, right? Without listening first, but then also I just really love that the first word that we hear um, on the song is love or loved, but the first sound that we hear are these moans and these hums that you're talking about. 